Okay, today we're just going to look at a break-even chart and the quickest way to doing one, especially if you really struggle with the formulas and calculations and trying to remember them. Essentially, when we're looking at it, there are just three lines that you need to know for a break-even chart. You have to draw a fixed cost line, a total cost line, which is your fixed cost plus your variable cost, and a total revenue line, which is all the money you get in for selling stuff. So to measure all the money you get in for selling stuff, you multiply the selling price by the output. We need to know those three lines at zero units and essentially at your forecast output. So up here you're given forecast output of 50,000 units. So you need to calculate your fixed costs, your total costs and your total revenue at zero and 50,000 units. And then you'll be able to plot the three lines. If you can draw these three lines, you can essentially then figure out all the stuff based on that on your chart. So we'll dive into that now. I'm going to start with the total revenue line. So the total revenue line we were saying comes from looking at our selling price per unit. So we're going to sell them for 30 euro each. And we want to figure out if we sold 50,000 units or so our target output here, how much revenue would we get in? So we'd be getting in 30 euro for each of them and there's 50,000 of them. So we'd end up multiplying those by each other to find it. The reason I picked the total revenue line first is I find it's the best line to draw first because when we look at our axes over here, we're gonna measure our revenue and cost up here in euros. And the highest point that we go to up here will always be whatever your total revenue is at forecast output. So the 50,000 units, 50, units in this case. And we're gonna measure output down here in units. Okay, so we just don't wanna to forget to label both axes and then also put in our title up here which is a break-even chart for uh, whatever business it is that you're doing. Okay, let's just try and get the two, line, the two dots or two data points that we need for a total revenue line and we'll draw it. Okay, so total revenue is down here. Our selling price given to you in the question is 30 euro. So we need to multiply that by our output to get our total revenue. So here it is 30 euro multiplied by zero, which is equal to zero euro. So essentially, at zero units, our revenue is zero. And then we look at it at our forecast output, which is 50,000. It's the same selling price, 30 euro, multiplied by 50,000. And when we multiply them by each other, we will get 1.5 million euro, okay? So our two uh, data points are at 50,000 output, it's gonna be one and a half million, and at zero units output, it's gonna be zero euro. And we'll go and draw them now on our graph. Okay, so for graph, an essential thing here, I'm just gonna write NB up here, is to draw to scale. To scale means that the gap between here and here would be the same amount, and from here to here would be the same amount. So we wanna go up to 1.5 million up here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just write, it's in three zeros, so that means that you can just not write the three zeros at the end of everything just to be lazy. You can see here there is one, two, three, four, five. There's five gaps there. So if we divide this by five, we're able to spread it out evenly that this would be 1.2 million, this would be 900,000, this would be 600,000, and this would be 300,000. That way, the gap between all of those is the exact same. So it's drawn to scale, what that means. So each little box here is uh, 100,000 euro. Then our output, we know we want to go up to 50,000 units. So therefore, this is 40,000, this is 30,000, this is 20,000, and this is 10,000. And again, that way, we're going exactly to scale there, where uh, whatever, three different boxes on that grid will equal up to 10,000 units. But the gap between here and here is the same as from here to here, and that's exactly what we want. So let's draw our total revenue line. We said when output is zero, which is over here, total revenue is zero. And then we said when output is 50,000, here, we dot up and our total revenue is gonna to equal to uh, 1.5 million. So it'll be over here. So if we get, uh, I'm just using a ruler here. I don't, uh, so we want it to be, you wanna use your ruler and make sure everything is the exact same and we're drawing it to scale. So if we dot across here, we're gonna end up with our total revenue point up here. We can call that total revenue. And then what we want to do then is draw those two points together uh, to connect them. And it'll just go up at whatever pace it goes up. In this case, it's going up at 30 euro every time the units go up. 
So that is our total revenue line. Next line we draw will be our fixed costs. So our fixed costs are literally given to us in the question. So when you see whatever is written beside fixed costs here, fixed costs, an example of fixed costs is a rent. The definition for fixed costs is a cost that remains the same regardless of output changes. So that means that your fixed cost is 300,000 euro no matter what output you produce at. So if we want to just put that into our box for consistency, let's have a look. At zero units, we are going to be 300,000 euro. And even if output goes up to 50,000 units, we are still going to be 300,000 euro. So essentially, if we're paying stuff like rent, we have to pay it regardless of whether we produce nothing or we produce 50,000 units. So let's plot that line on the graph then at 300,000 euro. Okay, so we want to find where 300,000 euro is and at zero units, it's over here. And if we draw the line across over to 50,000 units over here, this is our fixed cost line. So the costs that remain the same regardless of changes in output. Now, a kind of a cheat thing to just think of is that this here is going to be the start of our total cost as well. So whatever, wherever the fixed cost point starts, we're going to also have our total cost line. So what we're looking to do now is just find another total cost line up here somewhere. And then we'll be able to link them together and that will get us our break even point and everything else that we need. So let's go and try and draw our total cost line. So just to remind us, our total costs are made up of our fixed costs, which are 300,000 no matter what. That's why we have the line over, over here. And then our variable costs. So our variable cost per unit is the cost like raw materials, wages, stuff like that that we have to spend every time we make a unit. And to make this unit, it costs 20 euro every time that you make a unit. Okay, so we wanna look at when you don't make any units, how many 20s you spend, and that would be zero. And then we wanna look at at forecast output at 50,000 units, how much will we be spending on producing the product? If each one costs 20 and you make 50,000, we'll have to multiply them by each other and then add in our fixed cost. So let's go and do that now. Okay, our variable cost is calculated by our 20 euro, which is the variable cost per unit multiplied by quantity. So at zero units, our variable cost is gonna to equal to 20 euro multiplied by zero. So we will have no variable costs at zero units because if we don't make any, we don't need any raw materials, etc. Our fixed cost is gonna be the same. We already had it up there, 300,000 euro. So if we add these two things together, our total cost at zero will be 300,000 euro. Okay, we already marked that on the graph there because I was saying it's gonna be the same. Wherever your fixed costs start is also gonna be your first point in your total cost. So these two will be the exact same same way these two will be the exact same so this fixed cost figure will give you three of the six points that you need uh, in order to get full marks if you wanted to kind of <clears throat> try and cheat it a little bit as well your total revenue will always 100 percent of the time be zero so these four points here are very very easy to get at the very very start so ultimately the only two points that you need to make your break-even chart work is your total revenue at forecast output and your total cost at forecast output because you could go and find the fixed cost and dot in the, the three points here, here, and here. They're all the same, 300,000. And then you can always put in your total revenue at zero, at zero units. Okay, but let's have a look at our total cost. Our variable cost is 20 per unit. And if we multiply that by our 50,000 units, it'll tell us how much variable cost we spend when we are producing our forecast output of 50,000. So it's a million. Our fixed costs remain the same regardless of output. So that's 300,000 euro. So our total cost then is those two things added together, which is 1.3 million euro. So that is our total cost at 50,000 units. So now we need to plot these two points, our total cost of 300,000, which we've actually done, and our total cost of 1.3 million. And if we connect those lines, we have our break-even chart set up. Okay, so just to recap, this is the first point of our total cost line here because it's the, it's the same as our fixed cost line. And then we need to go up and find 1.3 million, which is over here. And we just wanna dot that across until we reach our target output, which is over here. And that is our total cost. Okay, then we wanna connect those two lines together. So, uh, or those two dots together. So the two red points we want to connect together. 
and what we what we what you could figure out if you did your break even analysis is that the break even point is going to be at 30,000 units that's your fixed cost divided by your contribution but you don't even need to if we just connect these lines like so wherever the the lines meet your total revenue and your total cost meet will be your break even point okay so for drawing them what you would get normally in terms of marks we would have one mark so far for our axes one mark down here for our other axes we'd have two marks for a fixed cost line four marks for a total cost line and four marks for a total revenue line for drawing in our break even point then we would also get four marks so out of 25 uh, sorry and our title as well would be a mark so out of 25 we are already just for drawing those three lines we're looking at 17 out of 25 there okay what i would also do with the break even point would be just dot across to show the break even revenue and costs so essentially if they make their break even amount of thirty thousand units it means that they will earn ninety thousand euro and then also cost them ninety thousand euro and you can see that the break even output here is thirty thousand units so i would just put break even output down here just to show the examiner that you know that that's the amount of units they would make in order to break even so next up let's just the question will ask you to show your margin of safety so your margin of safety is the difference between your target output and your break even output so it's how far sales can fall from your target to your break even point so your target to your break even is your margin of safety And we just want to show the lines essentially between this output and this output. So that is your margin of safety. It's 20,000 units because it would fall from 50 to, to 30,000. I just like to put in 20,000 units on the graph as well, just to show the examiner that you understand that. So the only other thing then that you would get asked for is your profit at full capacity and our forecast output. And we've already essentially done that because at 50,000 units, if we look up here, our total cost we know is 1.3 million and our total revenue which is up here is 1.5 million up here so the difference between this and this would give you your profit at forecast output so in this case it is the difference between your total revenue and your total costs and for this question it is 200,000 euro so again all you're trying to do is show the difference between those two dotted lines here from here up to here and that is your profit at forecast output which is shown the difference between this line and this line here. So what we've done here and drawn here would give you full marks at higher level leaving search break even. Um, if we wanted to look at the, like the limitations of it, if you think of like what a limitation would be, it'd be that our total revenue just goes up in 30s the whole time, but it, essentially you may look at selling off some stock at maybe a cheaper price or a lower price. It doesn't include any refunds or defective products that you may have to give a refund for or you mightn't be able to sell but you did produce it also assumes that all output produced is sold where in reality you might have produced say forty thousand units you only sell thirty thousand so therefore your total cost would be higher than if you if you just produced and sold only thirty thousand so there's a couple of limitations there and um, they're in the notes anyway to look at and then the other thing you want to consider is the uses and if you just talk about your margin of safety as a use i.e. it would show potential investors the safety net there or the risk involved a wider margin of safety would have lower risk because sales can fall a good amount from the forecast or the target output before you would make a loss and then you could talk about the profit to full capacity as well and um, that sale it, it, a break-even chart would show investors the potential profit should the business reach its targets or its forecast Okay, so just to wrap up, if I zoom back out for a sec, this should be the, the sh what your sheet would look like now. It all lies in finding your fixed cost, your total cost, and your total revenue aligns. When you find them at zero units and forecast output, forecast output is given to you in the question. So if you do that for, that, for those three lines, you will be able to draw the three lines up in your graph that matter and you haven't done any of the formulas or you haven't had to learn off the break even amount or anything like that you just know how to draw those three lines and then from that you can highlight on the chart where each of the things are the profit of forecast output the break even point and your margin of safety